What up guys and welcome back to Game Club where we do all things video games. I'm your host John and we're going to be looking at every single console I own today. Yes, I thought it'd be a fun idea and yeah, without further ado, let's just hop straight into the video. Alright guys, we're going to start with Nintendo with the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is where it all started. Basically, it's freaking amazing. I love this console, everything about it. You could tell it's old school just by its like its design, but yeah, everybody knows this console. The games are freaking amazing. And yeah, which moves us to the Super Nintendo. 16-bit graphics, definitely a cool system, a lot more slimmer than the NES. Um, yeah, this system right here just was really awesome as well. Had some crazy good games. This is kind of like where I feel like RPG started blowing up on the Super Nintendo. And man, I remember playing like Donkey Kong Country uh, and Super Mario World. This is, was just a straight up awesome console. But yeah, the Super Nintendo. We have the original N64. This is an absolute classic with four controller ports. This was this is what I like to call a good time, a party. This is definitely the party console you had back in the 90s. Uh, with Mario Party, um, Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, four player. I mean, it was amazing. This is definitely a console you every kid had back in the day. And yeah, the original N64. I also have it in all gold, so I think this was a Toys R Us exclusive, but I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong. But this looks freaking amazing. I love this console. And here is the more obscure Pikachu N64, uh, Pikachu edition Pokemon. This is like awesome. It's like I said in, my, in one of my videos before, this is like my childhood all wrapped up into this thing. Yeah, this is more of an uncommon N64, but it's lights. Uh, when you turn on the power right here with a Pokeball, his light, his uh, cheeks light up red and it looks super cool at night. And yeah, I'm missing the the door right here, but eh, I'll have to order it on eBay soon. But yeah, definitely a cool console to have in my collection. Here is a GameCube, definitely known by many. It's a lot of great games back in the day four controller ports. This is kind of like N64, but like way better graphics, but it kind of like continued on that legacy. Um, really amazing games on this one. It had like small like discs that would go inside here and that kept people from uh, piracy, I think. But yeah, this is my black uh, GameCube. My cousin has the purple one, but he's using that one right now. But I have a couple more GameCubes to show you. This is more like a silver platinum GameCube, but definitely a welcome color to the collection. Uh, this one just looks so sleek and so cool. I love its design, but yeah, I have another one to show you. And this is my final GameCube, the Orange Spice GameCube. I believe it's Japanese exclusive, but the color is freaking amazing. It has like this really cool like orange color to it. And yeah, it's just like any other GameCube, but I think it only plays Japanese games. But yeah, definitely a welcome uh, color into the GameCube, my GameCube uh, console collection for sure. So Nintendo moved on to a more sleek design with the Nintendo Wii. This one had motion controls. And at first I thought motion controls were like a gimmick, but the Wii actually does it very, very well. And yeah, it has the regular um, connections here in the back, USB. Uh, this has like the red, white, and yellow connections, but the first models actually had a GameCube built in. How cool is that? A, a, literally a GameCube emulator built into the Wii. Uh, I love that feature. This is super awesome, and they went back to just regular discs at this time, but yeah, here is the original Nintendo Wii. I have the red Wii, which this color reminds me of Mario, so it is super awesome, and it also is GameCube compatible which is super awesome for this colorway. Love this thing. I have the turquoise blue Wii. This one does not have the GameCube backwards compatibility, but still a welcome addition to the Wii family, for sure. I love this color. So then Nintendo made the Wii U, which was a console that didn't sell as well because a lot of people just thought it was still a Wii, but this one had HDMI, which was a big upgrade, but it was a complete different console. It had better games, better graphics, and it it could play Wii games, and it also came with the Wii U gamepad, and yeah, um, I wasn't really a fan of this console, and the gamepad wasn't, you know, the most reliable, but yeah, I, uh, I, I wouldn't say it was a terrible console, but it wasn't Nintendo's best console, but still has a lot of great games. Don't let that uh, steer you away from purchasing this console. There's still a lot of great games here on the Wii U. 
definite welcome to the Nintendo console family. My final Nintendo uh, console is a Nintendo Switch OLED edition. Yeah, I think everybody knows this. This is Nintendo's newest console. Um, this is just straight up amazing. You can take this thing anywhere. And yeah, the graphics are amazing. The games are amazing. Definitely, this is something you must pick up, Nintendo Switch. Uh, yeah, I don't really have to say much about this console. It's freaking amazing. Okay, so we're done with Nintendo, so let's move on to PlayStation. And this is the original PlayStation 1. This came out somewhat in the late 90s, and it also used CD technology. Definitely a good console. The graphics weren't that awesome. I mean, it was like a lot of polygons, but definitely, at the time, it was mind-blowing. Uh, PlayStation is, is where it all started, guys. This is crazy. Um, yeah, I love this console. Two controller ports, two memory cards, and a lot of games. Actually, a lot, a lot of games on this console. So, let's move on to my other PlayStation consoles. So, after the PlayStation 1, they released a smaller PlayStation 1. Kind of more of a compact version. Uh, it's the same type of thing. It's called the PS1. Still two controller ports, two memory cards. They released, like, new controllers with analog sticks. It was really cool. This is definitely a, a small console that would fit in a backpack or if you're traveling. This is a great uh, console to have in it. Actually, they even had, like you see these two hinges here? You could add it like a little TV screen and you can like play on the go. This was a really cool upgrade from the PS1 at the time. And yeah, it, it does everything the original PlayStation 1 does, but in a smaller uh, form. So yeah, let's move on to some more PlayStation consoles. So then PlayStation came out with the PlayStation 2. And I think it was like the year 2000 or something like that, but uh, this is still my ch original childhood PlayStation 2. It's kind of heavy, but man, look at that. It's pretty dirty as well. But this thing is a freaking beast. It has so many games, so good. Look, it still has this, all the scratches when I was a kid. I don't know what I was doing back then, but yeah, this thing is freaking amazing. A PS2, I would recommend picking up a PlayStation 2 today. There is just so many good games on this console still, and it is a beast. Definitely a big upgrade from PS1 to PS2. This is a must-have in your collection, I promise. It's a great console. Just like the original PS1, the PS2 made a slim edition as well. Uh, two memory cards, two controller ports, some USBs. It's just so small and so light. The original PS2 is a lot heavier. Look, it even has Ethernet. Um, yeah, has a small little power port, it has like an external power source, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is really awesome. Super lightweight, super portable, uh, it was kind of like more of a top loading type of thing, but yeah, this is a really cool addition, the PS2 Slim. This next console, guys, is so big and so heavy, it is the PlayStation 3. It is freaking massive, it is super heavy, it's so big I can't even like pick it up and, and show you guys. Like I'm gonna have to just like turn it around right here. But I mean this is this is crazy. Um, this was really expensive when it first came out. From what I've seen, uh, it was like $700 or something, but it, it, it did so much. It, it played DVDs, it played games, it played Blu-ray, it does like music CDs, you can finally like go onto the internet and like play online with friends and had like the whole PlayStation Online was born. This thing was definitely crazy, but yeah, this is an awesome console to have, but I would probably get a PlayStation 3 Slim if I, if I, if I could, if I had a chance to go back. Yeah, I want a PlayStation 3 Slim. I actually have one, but they made a bunch of different versions, but let me go ahead and get the PS3 Slim. All right. All right guys, so yeah, this is a PS3 Slim. A lot more smaller, and yeah, a lot more small, uh, more compact. Still had a lot of the same uh, capabilities. You got HDMI, power, uh, ethernet. You can still do a lot with the PS3. Still play Blu-ray, still play games, and everything else like the last console, just like a smaller version. Uh, I feel like this one's more reliable too, but yeah, this is a PS3 Slim, so this was a lot, um, better in my opinion than the last PlayStation 3. They also made like a top loading one that was even cheaper than this, but I don't have that one, but yeah. The PlayStation 3, good console though, good console. Yeah guys, so I actually don't have a PlayStation 4. I know it's crazy, but I upgraded to a PS5 and I sold my PS4, uh, I think like last year, but yeah, <laughs> I don't have a PS4, but the PS5 does play PS4 games, so 
yeah, let's go ahead and show the PS5. Yeah, I really don't want to disconnect my PS5 because it's like way back here, but yeah, that is a PlayStation 5. I feel like everybody knows that already, but yeah, there's the PS5. Freaking amazing, you already know that. Okay, so let's talk Xbox. This is the original Xbox, or a lot of people call it the OG Xbox. It's very, very heavy. This is Xbox, like, first attempt at a console, so it has a lot of uh, computer parts in it. Microsoft. And yeah, has power, your basic connections right here. I see is that like an ethernet port. Um, really good games though, surprisingly. I really liked Xbox, it had some really good titles back in the day. But yeah, um, this is the original OG Xbox. Super heavy though guys, trust me, it's, it's the big boy. So then here's the Xbox 360. A lot smaller than the original OG Xbox. Uh, the games are pretty good on here. Um, this is not the original 360, I think this is like the Xbox 360, I don't know if it's called S, but yeah, it's a little bit dirty as you see, but um, the original one was like all white and it was a bit bigger and it suffered from the red ring of death. If you don't know what that is, look that up. That's, yeah, no. This one is a lot better, a lot more efficient, but it's the Xbox 360. This is the second console that X Xbox made in their lineup. So let's go ahead and move on to the next Xbox I, I have. Okay, so here is the Xbox One. Yes, it looks like a VCR player, and it is actually pretty big and it's pretty heavy. Xbox makes like a lot of heavy consoles for some reason. I guess because they're more like computers, but yeah. Actually, a lot of ports in the back here. You see they have like Ethernet, HDMI, USBs, power, everything. But yeah, this is the Xbox One. Uh, this is the last Xbox console I have. I don't have any of the newer Xbox Series X or all that stuff. But yeah, this is the Xbox One. Good games. Uh, competed with the PS4, but yeah, super good. All right, guys, so we're going to move on to some more kind of uh, obscure consoles or consoles that aren't talked about that much. This is the Sega Dreamcast and this is the Sega Dreamcast Sports Edition, all black. This is one of my favorite consoles, honestly. Um, yeah, this console is freaking amazing. This is like, honestly, I feel like it was kind of like an Xbox in a weird way, if I could say that. I know it sounds crazy, but yeah. It was powered by the Naomi chip and the graphics were like super arcade-like. Um, definitely amazing, amazing games like Sonic Adventure, uh, Skies of Arcadia. There was just so many good games, but this is the Sega Dreamcast Sports Edition. The original came like in a more gray color. This is more of a uh, collector's edition, but yeah, this is a, a great console. And yeah, I feel like a lot of people slept on the Dreamcast back on the day. It failed miserably. But it is, it is such a good console. Yeah, you gotta pick one of these up, trust me. So we have the original Atari 2600. This is the, I think they call it the Darth Vader edition. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this is basically where video games like started, was created. Like the Atari 2600 was one of the first video game home consoles there ever was. Uh, I, I think there was some more before it, but I don't know that much about 70s and, and uh, video game consoles and before that but this had a lot of good games honestly for such an old console it, it had Pong, it had Yara's Revenge, Asteroid, Centipede, had all these really good classic games but uh, yeah I actually have an Atari 2600. Yeah guys so here is every single video game console I own currently in my collection. Yeah, so sorry about that, guys. My phone decided to die conveniently. So if you like this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to Gameplug, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.